Good evening, everybody. I'm coming here not to share about me, but I'm coming here tonight to share about the power of Jesus. Because Jesus is still alive, he's still yesterday and today and forever, he still do miracles. And I am one of the men Jesus do miracles in my life. I grew up in Palestinian refugee camp in Lebanon. I grew up with a small family, six brothers and six sisters. When I am about seven years old, I saw we have a lot of gun in my house. Everywhere in my house, we have a lot of gun. And later I know my father, he was leader with Yasser Arafat. He went, he led a group, uh, young people from my Palestinian camp in Lebanon. And he go to Israel, kill a lot of Jews and come back. And still right now, I have five brothers with Palestinian group. I grew up Muslim, I love my faith, I love Islam, and the same anyone, I go to the mosque every day, five times in the day, and the same anyone, what he need to be in the future, I say, I want to be Imam, I want to serve Allah. And I went to the school to study, you know, the Sharia law, you know, if, if anyone he want to be pastor, he want to go to Bible college. And for me, I went with a group called Wahhabi. The Wahhabi is the same ISIS, the same Al-Qaeda group, is very radical Islamic. And there I studied with them four years, and my life is a change. From Muslim to Muslim, radical. I, hate, I grew up hate Israeli and the American and the Christian, but there I grew up, I want to die for Allah. I want to kill people, and I can, God can, uh, uh, He be happy, and I can go to the heaven. I go also to the mosque, every day I have the key of the mosque in my Palestinian camp. I open the mosque and I am the man call people to come to pray. Maybe you hear sometimes this uh, sound, Allah, I make that in my Palestinian camp. I grew up, I remember when see something in the news, uh, some Israeli killed by bus or club or hospital. Me and some of young people, we go to the street in my Palestinian camp. We dancing, we shout, we give people candy because we need to finish these people. We need to finish because every now I don't have nationality. I am Palestinian refugee camp. I'm born in Lebanon, but I don't have nationality because we say that I'm, I don't have nationality. I am poor. People take my land. We need to kill these people. We need to finish these Christian people. One day, I am out of my Palestinian camp, because in my Palestinian camp we don't have a Christian. We have 30,000 Palestinians in my camp. Out of Lebanon, we have some Christian. And one day, I'm walking in the street, and one man coming to me, and he start tell me about Jesus. And for me, I look up to him. He's not shy about his Jesus, because we have the true. We have Allah, we have Muhammad, and what are you talking about? And I look to him, I say, you don't look to me? I am good Muslim. I have the robe, and I have, you know, the, the imam. I say, you don't look to me? Why are you coming to me? And I start nervous, and I start, because I say, he's not shy about his religion, about his Jesus, we have the truth. And he start telling me about love of Jesus, and start telling him, I came nervous, I start telling him about Muhammad. And he say, okay, I want to give you this Bible. And they say, I look into the Bible, you know. I want to know what in this book, but I am afraid because it's not allowed us to read the Bible. And I say, no, I don't want to take the Bible because it's, it's danger for me. I don't believe this is the word of God, but it's danger for me. And now if you go to any Arab country, you're not allowed to give people Bible or you're not allowed to read the Bible. You know why? After I know Jesus, I know why. Because when we're reading the Bible, God starts open our eyes. And the enemy, he don't want the people to know the word of God. Because the enemy, he wants the people to still without hope, without love of Jesus. Because that many, many Arab countries, many in the Middle East are not allowed to read the Bible. Because it's the power in the Word of God. When we're reading the Word of God, God can start open our eyes to see what is the truth. 
after I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with him, I say, listen man, I want to take the Bible, but you want to believe me? I don't believe this is the word of God. But I want to know what my enemy believes. I take the Bible, I put the Bible on my jacket, it's not easy. You, you live here in freedom country, you live in America. But for us, it's not easy, my brother and sister. I put the Bible on my jacket, and I went to my Palestinian camp, closed the door, closed the window. The first time I opened the Bible, I started to smell the Bible. Because, what is it? because 20 years I heard about this book, and I, it is the first time for me I heard about the Bible. Why we are afraid from this book? I start reading the Bible. For me, it's the same story. It's not the same, the Quran. I'm going to mosque, come back, not reading the Quran, reading the Bible. When I'm reading the Bible, I find something. This is the first time I heard in my life. In Matthew 5, 6, 7. Love your enemy. Bless your enemy. Love your enemy. My Allah, He said, kill your enemy. What kind of God this He say? And I start reading, reading from the Bible, and go to the mosque. After three months, I have confusion. When I find in the Bible, God is love. We have 99 names for Allah. We don't find one name, God is love. Always I go to the mosque, and I'm afraid from Allah. I don't know if God, He wants to take me to the hell or to the heaven. I don't have good relationship with, with God. But here in the Bible, I find something. If you tire, come to me, I give you rest. I find in the Bible something saying, God, He take care about me. God love me. God, He want you, you know, to, to, He came to give me good life. I don't find that. Always I'm afraid. I am scared from Allah and the Islam. This, this happened in my life. And I call, and I saw in the, in the book, if you want, uh, I have any question, call this number. And I call the man, I say, listen, I have many questions. And I start, and he say, listen, we have meeting, and I want some friend to meet with you. And I visit him, I don't know what meeting mean. And this is surprising me, is Christian meeting. I say, what I am doing with these people? I am with the robe, I'm coming with, with this Christian infidel people. And... And but something happened with me. Two questions coming to my mind. Why these people show me love? And for me I want to kill these people. Why these people is not worship the true God? And, and I am the man I worship the true God. But this is have a special one worship. He have peace and joy and lifting hand. And I don't have. I want the same this. I want, I love Allah, I want the same this people, but I don't have this in my Islam, my religion. And I start one and a half year, my brother and sister, reading the Bible, go to the mosque, I am Muslim, and reading Christian book. After one and a half year, I have confusion. Before I have the truth, after I'm reading the word of God, God start open my eyes to see where is the truth. And I go to the mosque, and I start asking my imam a question about Christianity, about Jesus, Isa. And one day he come to me, he says, Samir, why you ask me many things about Jesus? What's happened with you? And I say, you know, I'm reading the Bible now. I say, what? From where you get the Bible? It's not allowed. I say, I told him the story. And he say, did you... this?" The Christian people did you to, told you if you be Christian we give you money? I say no. Car? No. What, what's happening with you? I say nothing. I say okay. Did you drink coffee or tea with this people? I say yes. He say yeah. This people bought you something in the tea or coffee to be Christian. And I say yeah maybe. But really, if if I'm look back in my life, if you look my my picture, I have my picture. If you look my picture before, only the grace of God can change me. And he bought me and he started, he started praying for me. And he think that spirit of the Christianity can live in me. I go to the mosque, I still have confusion. He take the, came to my house, take the old the Bible. The old, he say, don't connect with this Bible anymore. I say, but this is good Bible, it's nice Bible. He say, no, 
You should kill this people. This people want to take you to the hell. Only I go to the mosque. I don't know what I want to do. In the mosque, I don't pray the Muslim prayer in the last month. I pray this prayer. Lord, where is the truth? In the mosque, I say, Lord, where is the truth? I am tired. I want to know the truth because something now opened my eyes. My story is very big, but I want to tell you. I visit my friend again in July 2001. I pray the prayer of salvation. I accept Jesus to be my Savior and my God. The story is not finished. This is the beginning of my life. This is the beginning of my story. The man, he gave me a small Bible. I went to my house and my brother in Palestinian came. He said, Samir, you came from where? I said, I visit my friend. He said, your imam, he told me what's happened with you. I don't can believe you. You, the man, you tell us be good Muslim and go uh, to the mosque. And now you go to the church? What's here? You have the Bible here? I don't can believe it. And he started fighting with me. And this time, I need somebody to encourage me to follow Jesus more. And he started fighting with me. And he said, you know, I can go now to the clothes and I can get the, the gun. I can kill you. And you can be, we finish because you are shame for the family. I'm not say, I don't tell you, you know, story. This is what's happened with me. This is what's not only happened with me, this is what happened with many brothers and sisters in the Middle East suffering when we follow Jesus. Maybe you live here, I told you again, maybe you live in a free country. I want to tell you something. My mom, she started crying. She said, you are ashamed for the family, Samer. The all my sister, she started, it's not easy. My brother and sister, my brother, he tried many times to kill me. Now 15 years, I don't live with my family. I've been in jail three times in Lebanon. People put gun here, not, not because I do, I do something wrong. Because I say, Jesus is my Savior, Jesus is my Lord. <laughs> my mom, she died eight years ago. I don't can go to see the funeral of my mom. And that time I'm in Lebanon, and my family in Lebanon. It's not easy, but... If you ask me, but why you still work with Jesus? My answer is not because I find the truth in the Bible. Yes, I find the truth in the beginning in the Bible. But the one keep me now walking with Jesus because I test him how he is for me. How he is with me. He is my shepherd. He is my Lord, my father, my Abba, everything for me. This is Jesus for me. It changed my life. If I am now without Jesus, I'm still with ISIS. I, I don't know where I am now. But I thank God for one man, his name George. He come to me and tell me about Jesus. I don't know now many people waiting for you the same me. And one day he come to you and tell you why you didn't tell me ab about your Jesus. My question is, 20 years, not somebody tell me about Jesus. Why? A lot of Muslims here, a lot of people here without hope. Are you shy about your Jesus? People waiting for you, my brother and sister. I coming here, we have the, all the Muslim nation to tell you, help us to know Jesus. <laughs> Why you keep Jesus for you only? Why? We need to know the truth. Without this man, he give me the Bible. I don't know the hope in Jesus. But I thank God for him. In the gas station, in anywhere, people waiting for you. I have two special stories in my life. The one when I came to Jesus. The second one, after four years I came to Jesus, I went to Cyprus in Europe. And invite to speak in the Arab conference. And in the break time, I take my camera and I walk in the street and I saw a beautiful garden. And I came because this is my culture in the Middle East. I knock on the door and the man opened the door. He said, How I can help you? I say, You can take, I want to take picture in your garden. He said, Okay. 
And he take me some picture. And he say, you from where? I say, I'm from Lebanon. And I coming here for a Christian conference. He say, oh, I am pastor from America. Come, come, you can meet me and my wife. And I drink with him in his, I don't know him. This is the first time for me. I drink with him coffee in his house. And he say to me, but you are Lebanese. I say, no, I am Palestinian. I grew up in Palestinian camp. He say, you Palestinian? I say, yes. He say, you know who we are? I say, yeah, you are from America. He say, yes, yeah. but the brother Samir, we are a Jewish, believe in Jesus, believe in Yeshua. I say, what? I drink coffee with Jewish man? <laughs> and he say, brother Samir, because this is the first time in my life I saw Jewish. We don't have a Jewish in Lebanon. And he say, brother Samir, you can come tomorrow and you can share your testimony. We have group here from different country and you can share your testimony. I say, yes, I come in. And I went next day with him. And he say, I have friend here. And he speak a little bit Arabic. I want you to meet with him. And I put my hand to this man and say, oh, from where you know Arabic? He say, in my country we have a lot of Arab. I say, oh, but you from where? He say, I'm from Tel Aviv. I'm from Israel. I say, what? From Israel? This is the first time in my life, always I see the Israeli in the television. I see Israeli face to face. Yes, I believe in Jesus, but I still hate these people that time. And the pastor coming to me because he saw I'm nervous. First, if the Lebanese government, he know I meet with the Israeli, I can be in jail when I come back. The second, my father, he killed a lot of these people. And yes, I believe in Jesus, but I hate these people. And I say, I come into the Arab conference, why I need to meet this man and, you know, to, uh, to come here. My brother and sister, I'm sharing my testimony with them. After I'm sharing my testimony, I say, if I come here before three years, I can make bomb here. After I'm sharing my testimony, six people from Israel coming to me in the stage and say to me, Brother Samir, in the name of the Israel nation, we need to tell you we are sorry. Forgive for us. In the name of the Israel nation, we need now to wash your feet. When I saw the Israeli, my enemy before, is coming and start washing my feet, I started crying. Because it's not, this is the first time I meet with the Israeli. And who is washing my feet? My enemy, the people I want to kill him. My father killed all of these people. And the people started praying in Hebrew. And I say, God, the Israeli hand is not killing me, is a blessing me. From 2004, when I am there, God opened my heart and make operation and take the, all the head I have for Israel. And He gives me special love for this nation. <laughs> Who can do that? Only Jesus. And now, in the cross, the gentle and the Jewish, we meet. Why? Because we know the king of peace. And the answer in the Middle East now, people 70 years in the Middle East, he want to know what, what we need to do with the land, with this, with the Arab, with the Israeli. I know the answer. I find the answer. When the Arab and Jews coming to Jesus, coming to Yeshua, there is the King of Peace. Where we coming to the King of Peace, there is peace and there is shalom. God bless you. Thank you. Dear God, I ask that we will hear the cry of Samer's heart today. And even today, this week, we will be bold to tell people about Jesus. We pray that nobody who contacts us and you open that door for us to talk, make us bold like a lion. Put your word in our mouth. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in us. Sharing, 
talking, inviting, loving, being kind, just like those who led Samer to Christ. Look at me, all of you here in the front, okay? I want to make a date with you. This Tuesday at 7, I sit right there. Come, let's pray together. How many are really serious in what you pray? Just lift your hand up, okay? So I ask you to make a date with me. Come and follow the Lord together, okay? Greet one another. See you on Tuesday. God bless you. You're dismissed.